The Leadership of the Holy Spirit Peter's Epistles No. 16 By Dr. Robert D. Luganbill Reviewing Spiritual Growth We find ourselves in the midst of an important digression on the subject of spiritual growth. This study was occasioned by Peter's wish for all believers to experience an increase of grace and peace from God. 1 Peter 1-2 As we noted at the time we first studied this passage, spiritual growth is the only means the only path to any fulfillment of this wish in our daily lives. Experiencing the power of God's grace and love, and the joy that fills the heart when we are truly focused on Him, requires the steady growth of our inner person. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Spiritual growth is both the prerequisite for, and the means to obtaining the increase of God's blessing to which Peter refers. We should not however think of such blessing in primarily material terms, this is not to say that God never pours forth material blessings upon believers. We need only to think of Abraham or Joseph. Nevertheless, it is true that the New Testament in particular warns us of the hardships and sufferings which accompany spiritual progress. 1 Peter 4.12-19 We would therefore be well advised to think of the blessings attendant upon spiritual growth, likewise in spiritual terms. These are the sorts of blessings which attend spiritual growth, and which transcend material gain in this world. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 through 21. To know the true happiness of putting Christ at the center of our lives. Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 through 11. To fulfill the potential of production to which we have been called. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. To anticipate God's approval of our lives as a job well done. Matthew chapter 25 verse 21. Principles of Spiritual Growth When we first began talking about spiritual growth, we spent a good deal of time on the parable of the sower, Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8. The plant which springs from the seed of the Word of God represents us, our faith and spiritual life. Those who do take root, actually conceiving a saving faith in Jesus Christ, have two problematic growth phases to contend with before they can bear fruit or be productive in God's plan. They must send their roots down deep enough to gather sufficient moisture to withstand the heat of the sun. That is, they must take in and retain by faith enough truth or spiritual nutrition to build up their faith so as to withstand the times of testing which come into the lives of all believers in Jesus Christ. They must rise above the earthly weeds that will otherwise choke their growth and prevent them from bearing fruit. That is, they must not only hold on to their faith in times of testing, but must learn to apply what they have learned to life, subordinating earthly concerns and desires to their heavenly hope, and persevering in the unique production God has given to each believer despite the pressures of life. Overcoming life's testing requires much biblical ammunition, distilled into principles of truth and stored in the heart by faith. To weather the constant storm of life, however, requires more than an emergency procedure of accessible principles. It requires a whole new approach to life, a whole new way of thinking. We shall call this approach virtue thinking. Introduction to Virtue Thinking When we become Christians, things change dramatically for us. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Though still residing here in the devil's world throughout our earthly life, we have nevertheless been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Our status has completely changed, and now our manner of thinking must change as well. Our spiritual growth depends upon us laying claim to our new man status by actively making ourselves new through spiritual thinking. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. The development of spiritual or virtue thinking is a necessary part of the process of sanctification in time. As we have seen, Sanctification in Christ and sanctification in eternity are immediate developments accomplished by God for us and require no sustained effort on our part. However, attempting to fulfill the mandate to be holy as God is holy, 1 Peter 1.16, involves more than avoiding negative behavior. It also requires positive progress in God's plan through our active pursuit of the goal of spiritual maturity. When I was a child, the Apostle Paul says, I thought and reasoned as a child, but when I became a man I did away with childish things, 
1 Corinthians 13, 11. Just as we must eventually adopt a mature outlook as adults in the secular realm of life, so after we become believers, we must change our pattern of thinking to reach spiritual maturity. The nature of man. All human beings possess a dichotomous nature, that is to say we are all composed of spirit as well as body. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 9. And the Lord God formed the man, that is Adam's body, from the dust of the ground, then blew into his nostrils the life-giving breath, that is his spirit, and thus the man became a living person. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 The first man, Adam, had a material part, a body which the Lord made out of earth, and an immaterial part, called here the breath of life, which the Lord placed into his body. As a result, man became a living being. The word translated being in the New International Version is the Hebrew nephesh, often translated soul, and for which the Greek equivalent is psyche. As a result of God's creative act, the first man became a whole, complete, living person. It was only after Adam received the immaterial, life-giving part that complemented his material part that he became complete. Like Adam, we are now and through resurrection shall ever be body and spirit. But in these present bodies of corruption, our thinking is naturally drawn to conform more to the evil world around us than to the spiritual side of our makeup. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. The Heart Human thought is a product of what the Bible often calls the heart, that is, the entire inner person, comprising all thoughts, emotions, etc. According to the system of psychology in the Bible, the heart is the place where body and spirit interact, a place strictly distinct from the spiritual part of our nature, 1 Corinthians 2.12 and 14.14. Everything starts with the heart. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 states, As a man purposes in his heart, so he is. From a biblical point of view, the heart is who we are. It is here in our heart, a place in biblical terms not at all divorced from our emotions, that we fight our most important spiritual battles. The heart is the place where we honor God, and also the place from which proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and slanders. Matthew chapter 15 verse 18 and 19. Therefore the natural thinking which held sway in our minds before salvation was heavily influenced by the lusts, desires, fears, and other emotions generated by the sin nature. 1 Corinthians 2.14 Now that we are believers, we are no longer natural, that is oriented toward the fleshly part of our nature, but spiritual, that is oriented toward the spiritual part of our nature. 1 Corinthians 2.15 Nevertheless, even as believers, we are not now miraculously exempt from the same powerful influences to worldly thought which led us astray before we were saved. To free ourselves from slavery to our old pre-salvation ways and to transform our lives into a pattern of positive growth and service for God requires a transformation of our thinking as well. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the revitalization of your thinking so that you may be able to discover what God's will is that is, what is good, well-pleasing, and mature, in his sight. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 The transformation of life referred to here is a spiritual one, a growing away from the old and into the new. It can only be accomplished by a new or virtuous pattern of thinking, which emphasizes the spiritual side of our being, and stands in stark contrast to the carnal pattern of worldly thinking which surrounds us. So we need to think differently than we did. But what does that mean?